here we go again. My friend John Haggerty has left this Gibson 185 for restoration. This is going to be a fun project. I have one of these. It's an earlier model. Let's take a closer look at this. This faceplate is clean, man. This thing's, uh, wow. So, yeah, so this one, he's complaining about, uh, sounds real farty. He actually plugged it in. He's a braver man than I am. Um, anyways, I'm going to get this all up and running to spec. It's missing the, uh, fuse cap get that all going all right fun here's fun, something fun. you don't see every day a pair of late 30s slash early 40s gibson 185s so here's the uh, port side it's missing one of the um, leather corners there Mine are long gone on mine. I have a uh, mine replaced with metal. Let's get this one tool out of here. Sorry. <clears throat> nice hinges. Here's the starboard side. <clears throat> Sorry. It's in pretty nice shape here. I mean, this must have been the side closer to the wall. I can't believe those hinges. This is from the early 40s. I mean, sorry, not hinges, corners. They are worn and cracking. Talk about worn and cracking. Okay, let's look at the back. This is the first piggyback amp that I've known of. Everybody thinks Fender invented that. Uh-uh. This is way before Fender. That port right there is for the uh, cable when you pull the head out. The top is lined with this cool wallpaper. I don't think these cabinets were wood. I think there's some kind of particle board. You gotta be really careful with them. There, there. That's the top removed. And of course, I doubt this is the original cable. Someone thought enough to put a non-polarized uh, two-prong cable in there. UL approved, I'm sure. We're going to rubber grommet that. Look at this. This is a little bit later. The actual 185. Uh, the one I have is actually says... 150 on it even though it's not and uh <clears throat> this one has got a black and these look like they were red once huh. and here's your uh, door got quite a bit of rust in there all right, yeah. really cool. So looking inside this cabinet, not sure if that's the original speaker, but it probably is. And you got about 200 feet of uh, umbilical cord. And that looks like the output transformer nestling down there. I don't know if that's originally there or not. 
Um, yeah, this one. Bolted together. This looks like this could use a little help here. Huh. There, that's the way it's supposed to be, right there. Got a nice little shelf for your, uh, you know, your hash pipe or whatever you want to put in there and hide. All right. Looking down from the top. Looks like that's the original power transformer for sure. You can make out the... Uh, tubes designation um, he definitely got a mismatched pair of 6L6's there this is more of a modern one this looks like an older one and uh, wow unlike mine this one has access to the uh, controls here mine is sealed in there really hard to get at and that looks like, oh man, that stuff's got to go. Yeah, I'm going to have to dig up a schematic for this particular one. And here's the back of the head. It's held in by some screws, probably original. And look at this nice black wrinkle paint. Mm. Wow, nice. And here's the bottom. Oh, I like that little formed feet. Amazing. All right, so I've labeled this so it'll go back the same way. And one of those is uh, flapping in the breeze a little bit there. Hopefully we can fix that. Look at this. Those are not original and probably need replacing. And looks like all the caps have been replaced at some point. Including um, the cap can. So we're going to run some tests. Let's see. See if... Uh, I'm going to say all those caps probably need replacing as well as those nasty caps in there. And that cord. Also, it looks like a beaver was hacking at this to install the uh, cap can sometime in this distant past. So they freaking hack that pretty good. Nice job, Kilroy. So the ESR on three of the four cap cans, the 20 UFs, 1.3. However, this one 3.84, I'm going to replace that cap can. I, there's no telling how old it is, but I'm going to replace that. Look what I found in my stash, Mr. Haggerty. Huh? Does that look familiar? These two, uh, these are 20 at 25 and Neither one of these is making any kind of reading at all on the ESR meter, so they're freaking pretty much dead. So that would contribute to some 
not so good sound, I would imagine. That cap there has to go. <laughs> These other two measure totally right on for what they're doing. Of course, we haven't been able to plug this in to see what it does in circuit. Hmm. So I found a fuse cap for this one that was missing and it swallowed it when I put it on there, it won't come out. <laughs> and of course the AC wiring is wired completely wrong in there. Talk Look about a square. fire hazard. These were just twisted on, sorry. These were just stuck on the fuse cap. That's a wire coming out of the 110, and that's going into the power transform, I do believe. They were just twisted on there. And look at this. I just happen to have an extra one. Well, we'll see what's going on here. Well, the one on the left is the original. And These tubes are obsolete, according to my... Hickok 6000. Fortunately, I have a list of obsolete tube types. These tubes have three sections, two diode sections and a triode section. Uh, so I'm going to give this one a test here. So far, so good. Well, unfortunately, this nice 606G Coke bottle is a 6L6 NFG. This 6N7 is another obsolete tube. pretty limp in that first triode and it's also testing piss po in the second triode so this one is a replace also the good news is is 5u4 is testing pretty good in the first triode 2500 there that's good that's a nice strong rectifier right there. Oh yeah. I'm getting ready to wire up the uh, AC wiring. I thought this was kind of cool. Hemp lined three way power cable. Nicely grommeted. Okay, I've got the AC wiring wired. So what I have here is the black wire comes in it goes to the fuse, comes out of the fuse, goes to the switch. The other side of the switch has the uh, tra one side of the transformer. And the white side, the white wire from the wall is neutral and just goes to the transformer. And then we got the ground uh, hard soldered to the chassis. And I see some text leave it alone. Cute text, too. And they wired incorrectly. I like this When way. I do wiring like that, before I even get into anything else, I want to check my work. So I got this plugged into the patented Uncle Doug current limiter. I'm going to plug it in. Switch is on. And we got a nice red light and no glow and the switch works nice Oop. looks like I got a little short in that switch damn it that switch needs to be replaced okay uh, correction I uh, I contact spray and it works great now 
All right, beautiful, onward. This is from the What Could Possibly Go Wrong. This is your high voltage B plus here. Look at that. Look at that. I think I should replace this, but this is original wire. No, it's not, and yes I am. Okay, there's the new filter cap wired in. It blends right in. Alrighty. I'm gonna do something with this mess, a little bit different. With these uh, 20 at 20 filter caps, sorry, bypass caps. I don't know, you decide. Is this better? Or are we gonna use this? This or this? I think this is gonna be this right here. This is better. So I'm gonna run wires for that. Look at these freaking bypass caps. I'd say that we're expired. See that? That shit's leaked out. Oh, fuck, I didn't even say shit. Sorry. Uh, that has really leaked out of there. Uh, yeah, I think it's time to replace these. The Mighty Midget. That's not a midget. Look at the size of this compared to this one. <laughs> if that's a midget, what's that? <laughs> Alrighty, new electrolytic caps and new ground. All right, Get some new caps going up there. Alrighty, out of the way and easy to work on now if you ever do have to replace them, which you will in another 10 or 12 years. Okay. Onward, I've replaced that filament wire going from the pilot light. Uh, it was just, I mean, all this wiring really needs to be replaced, but that's not feasible, I think, at this point. Um, Next up, we're gonna attack the preamp. He was complaining that the uh, input jacks didn't work. And also, I'm gonna replace these uh, caps here. These are like beyond shot. Those caps right there gotta go. And look at that. I doubt these are doing much. Look at that old pot. Sure hope it works. And there's the new tone control wired in. I apologize in advance for the orange drop, but it's all I had in that value. Alrighty. Okay, I'm firing this up and I've got uh, just the rectifier plugged in. I'm measuring pin two to ground. looking good I wonder why it's moving around like that but uh these old amps uh, I'm not the greatest but I'm the greatest to the greatest comes around okay uh, I'm just gonna plug it in see what happens okay I'm gonna plug in my current limiter and lighting up I do have a signal going through there but it's turned down and I hear a buzz and some little bit of current draw there now this is three amps of uh, the rectifier is seeing so I'm gonna just squeak the volume up a little and we got just a nice hum let's try another channel Poor 
that doesn't even work. Let's try the mic channel. Sounds great, huh? Yeah. It's not what I'm hoping for, but hey, at least we have life. I'm guessing I'm going to run a signal through there, and uh, I think the input jacks are all messed up. Man... Those things are so messed up and funky. I'm sure that's what's, well, nothing is sure in electronics, but I have a hunch that those are what's causing that insane, horrible buzzing when I turn this amp on. So I'm going to ditch those and put these in. I mean, do we want this to be a museum piece? It already isn't, or do we want it to be reliable? Okay, so I started disconnecting the uh, input jacks, and uh, I'm getting a sound. Going into the mic. To the, uh, the instrument jack and I'm getting just a buzzing that's affected by the mic and no no tone ah, so I got to trace that <laughs> That's just the mic channel working. That speaker sounds pretty bad. But it's a good start. Kind of like a busload of harmonica players at the bottom of the ocean. Well, uh, channel one, the instrument channel, has got this insane buzzing. So what I did was, I'm injecting a signal right into pin two, right into pin two of V2, that's the grid, and turn it up a little bit. I have signal. So there's something in simple wiring problem between the pot and the input jack. I'm suspecting that it's actually a bad pot. So here's a top view of what I've done so far. I got rid of that horrendous buzzing in the uh, instrument channels. It's actually one channel in parallel. Um, two bad jacks, a bad resistor, some shoddy wiring and a shorted pot were causing the signal to not get to the uh, to here to the to the um, preamp tube. All right, so I replaced those. I got a beautiful match set of six V sixes. Um, Looks like they're from uh, 1946. And then I got a beautiful Coke bottle 6N7 and the original uh, Coke bottle uh, 5U4 in there. Uh, these tubes here, these 6J7s all tested, or sorry, 6SQ7s, <laughs> uh, all tested good. Um, so, and then I love my orange drop in there. Um, and I'm gonna now, uh, just check the bias on here. 
because right. of the curvature of this graceful Art Deco piece. Um, I'm only able to hook up one of my uh, patented Bill O'Dell bias meters. And uh, the milliamps are a little bit high there for what I'd like to see. Uh, I think I'm going to adjust that. Uh, it's cathode bias, so I'm going to um, see if I can adjust that resistor. And to make sure these tubes are matched, not that I don't trust my buddy, um, I plug the other one in. And these are like so matched, it's not even funny. Um, to find a set of uh, 6L6 GAs of this vintage matched is next to impossible. I, I, I Unless you have a ridiculous tube stash. All right, I'm going to uh, check the... Uh, um, that bias. Uh, okay, resistor. well, I didn't take into account the low plate voltage with the high current. So I plugged in my comp compu bias, which does the calculation for you. And because I'm too lazy to do the math right now. And I found out that the, uh, the uh, resistor that's in there is uh, perfect, actually. It's uh, 6L6s are 8 to 13. And this, uh, watts, that is. And this one is a comfortable 10.6 watts. So it's, it's, it's perfect. I'm just going to leave it alone and look at this, getting to the uh, speaker. All right, now. well, unfortunately, um, there was a, uh, another bad pot in there. And also a capacitor that was way out of spec. So I put this one in there, um, and also um, that one right there, and uh, the tone control seems to be working better. It's not the greatest circuit, I'll tell you, for tone control, but my other one kind of works like this, too. So this is... Uh, pretty much ready to button up. I just want to do a little something with uh, that. Can I clean that up a little bit? Um, the other thing about this uh, tone circuit was, it was, it was, I don't know if you remember, I just copied what was in here, put the orange drop in there, and then after carefully examining this mess over here that they call a schematic, <laughs> I realized that someone had wired it all wrong. So this is wired now the way the schematic says. Okay, so I got this thing all buttoned up and now I'm gonna give the uh, speaker a uh, listen. My preliminary listens told me that uh, it was uh, tired and in need of a recomb, but let's just double check that. Okay, these amps are not like killer loud. Um, this is pretty much the instrument channel, pretty much cranked. I mean, it sounds great 
it's just there's some rattle and I think it's the speaker. speaker out enough to look at it and it has not seen the light of day since it was new I think look at this that's accumulated dust and <laughs> and what have you nice huh um, While this speaker is not blown, the uh, you got you got some. Uh, this cone is like super dried out. Now it may respond to uh, a doping. Here's a the spider. That's what's rattling. That. You can see the voice coil under there, if you look. There it is. So we're gonna glue this all back around and uh, dope, clean that off and dope the, the surround all the way around and uh, not recone it. I, I get the feeling that the owner does not wanna recone this. Um, and it's not blown, so we're just going to have to clean it up, glue it up, and I don't recommend cranking this thing at full volume for very long. Okay, I right. glued that spider back down all the way around. And now I'm going to do this around. If you want to be a dope, pay 10 or $15 for a tiny bottle of speaker dope. Or, you can get this stuff. Thanks, Uncle Doug. This is great stuff for doping speakers. So I know the uh, vintage um, fill-in-your-derogatory uh, blank uh, police, vintage royals, uh, would throw up their hands in horror at this uh, doping. But... Upon reflection, I hope they'll realize that I'm trying to preserve this 1941 cone and voice coil here. Alrighty, so here's some final uh, sound testing with the mighty and majestic Gibson 1940-something or other EH-185. Um, there is, you know, quite a, a, a hum there, and uh, when you when you turn the microphone channel down and the headphone or the instrument up, it's a lot less. Um, so uh, again, if you turn this down and you turn this. I wouldn't go past here. So this is, a, to me, a usable hum. Um, hum. Um, I've already got quite a few hours into this uh, amp, and I'm not sure if the owner, John Haggerty, wants me to keep going with this. I'm going to do a sound test now. For the clean channel, I'm going to use my 1943 Style A. D'Angelico Restore. That's for channel one. So here's channel one cranked. Now, this input has a pretty high impedance. Um, it's uh, 200K resistors. Um, not extremely much higher. I would lower it, but again, I'm not sure if the owner wants me to horse around I'm basically trying to get this back to original specs so anyway so here's the uh, here's the uh, um, channel one <laughs> Cool. 
overdrive or mic channel, which has basically no impedance going into it. I'm going to use this horrible um, sounding 1959 Fender Stratocaster. I apologize in advance. Like I said, there is some hum in this channel. Um, and I'm, I got it up to three, and I'm not going to, I wouldn't put it past three with this speaker in there. It's the original cone speaker, and um, if you got to go louder than three um, or four at the most, you probably need another amp. So anyways, it, it's, a lot of this... Uh, is due to the fact that a lot of this home now is due to the fact that there's literally a fluorescent light three feet from it and it's a single coil. that look what happens when I uh, I got my uh, meter set on continuity and look what happens what there's nothing going on there I'm gonna replace that and do the sound check all over okay again. let's give it a final look over before I button it back up a final final look over at what I did so yeah I cleaned up that wiring there um, new AC correctly wired uh, new pot there um, changed out that cap there which made a huge difference in the tone response changed that cap um, moved that cap off of the uh, tone control it was like had an umbilical cord down into the that was creating some noise and that wax cap that was was in there was was uh, non-functioning and there was another extra cap that was not part of the schematic that I pulled out of there um, which was um, in addition to that cap so it was messing with the tone control um, replaced those uh, caps there those are uh, I believe though yeah cathode uh, caps there um, Fix the heater wiring. Replaced all the ja input jacks. They were just in, just bent and screwy and not working. Um, fixed some grounds here and there. Um, also replaced um, the uh, uh, volume control uh, pot and. Uh, but other than that, I really didn't do anything. And now for the uh, second sound test with this that I forgot to replace is replaced with a nice, nice Goodman, Goodman's good. Um, replaced the uh, bogus non-polarized two-way power cord. Um, with a properly wired AC, replace the 
faulty fuse cap with a period correct one from my stash. Uh, replace the um, the two six L6s with a matched pair of unobtainium 40s 6L6s and replace the uh, 6N7 with a uh, period correct 40s 6N7. So all right, look at that. Button that up, give it a sound check. Okay, so I'm using the same guitars, using the first sound check. Uh, here's channel, the instrument channel, uh, with everything cranked. And it's a big difference with that cap changed correctly. <laughs> difference much more clarity and the uh, tone control uh, works a lot better now too okay here's the strap through channel two up to about uh, two and a half or three <laughs> Here's the tone up about halfway. message from the emergency amplifier system. If this had been an actual emergency, you would have been instructed to plug in your vintage Fender or Marshall amplifier, period. Please wait for further instructions, and this concludes this broadcast of the EH-185 sent to you by the emergency amplifier broadcasting system. Thanks for watching. Hope this helps.